Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm going to be going over the GBRS group IFAS, which stands for Individual First Aid Systems. So your IFAC, or in this instance, the IFAS, this medical kit is for you. So if you're injured, your buddy should be using your medical kit to render aid to you. Now in special circumstances, if your buddy was injured and they didn't have a first aid kit on them, then obviously use your med kit. So what you see here, guys, they are individual components. I typically don't buy pre-filled kits. I usually like to buy each item individually. Sure, you might save a few bucks if, if you do a pre-filled kit, and that's totally cool too. So everything you see here is direct from North American Rescue. I strongly advise if you're going to be buying individual products or pre-filled items, make sure that you double check those items and you make sure that they are from North American Rescue. Because we've seen in the past people buying products from Amazon or whatever, and you know, they get their products and it's a complete Chinese knockoff. So the last thing you want to be doing is trying to slap a tourniquet on someone and the rod breaks, something snaps, or the product just doesn't work at all. I always advise uh, buying directly from the source. So North American Rescue, get it from them guys. So staging on the Ronin Tactics Task Force belt, I'm going to be going over the contents. So we have gloves for PPE, 14 gauge R's needle to treat uh, tension pneumothorax. It's a sterile package in itself. After I've done the intervention, what I would do is I would withdraw the needle, keeping the catheter in the patient's chest, and then I would put it back in here, cap it. This in itself, it's its own sharps container. Rolled gauze, combat gauze, compression bandage, North American Rescue Gen 7 cat tourniquet. In any of my kit, you're always going to see that I have tools to stop the blades. So I have here a Gen 7 cat tourniquet. It's already staged and ready to go. You're also going to be seeing some sort of hemostatic agent. So I have right here combat gauze, a regular rolled gauze, and then a compression bandage. I might also carry, if it's not this particular mini compression bandage, you might see a Israeli bandage or like a trauma dressing. NPA with lube. Now bear in mind that this NPA does not prevent the person from aspirating if they were to vomit. You can also utilize a chin lift or a jaw thrust technique. And in most cases, you could just put them in a recovery position. Or if they're willing to sit up, let them sit up. Blanket. You want to do your best to keep your patients warm. Hypothermia is not good for the person, especially if they're bleeding. Okay, so this right here says reflects and retains 90% of body heat. So if you have the ability to move this person to a warm spot, like inside a vehicle where you can turn on the heater, cool. If you have a sleeping bag, blanket, anything dry to just keep them warm, hot packs, I would also recommend those, but this is just good to have at the start. Hyphen vented chest seal, it's compact, it's a two pack. Fits really well in something of this size. Um, they do have bigger sizes, of course, and there are other types of versions of chest seals. Um, I primarily run hyphen chest seals because I'm very familiar with these chest seals that I've used in the past. Sucking chest wounds up in the thoracic region. So first you would put your hand on the hole to prevent more air from getting in. You would open this up. There's a seal plus a wipe. So you could wipe the blood off the actual wound and then you would slap these things on. So you would prevent more air from getting into the patient's pleural space. There's three vented areas. So it will allow excess air and blood to just ooze out while preventing more air from getting in. Now, the thing you got to note about putting chest seals on sucking chest wounds is you need to obviously be uh, continuously monitoring your person. So if they were to exhibit signs that they're having difficulty breathing, that the symptoms are returning, what you want to do is you want to take that chest seal and burp it. So you would just remove it for a, for a split second let the person breathe, let any excess air out. I would get my glove finger, stick it in, and dig around and remove any clots or adhesions that could be forming, that could be blocking passage. And then I would put the seal back on. North Park Rescue trauma shears. To do a proper assessment on a patient, you would need to cut through their clothes, right? So shirts, pants, jackets, where you can look at everything front to back, top to bottom, to look for any injuries. Duct tape. So you could use duct tape for a number of things. One, you could use it to tape down gauze. Another good thing that you would use this for is say that you ran out of chest seals. 
was you can actually take the commercial packaging, slap it on, and then seal it with the duct tape. All four sides to make your own makeshift chest seal, or you can just do three and then have a flutter valve. Definitely reassess them on a continual basis until you're able to hand off to higher level of care. That's that in a nutshell. My belt setup made for the Springfield Armory 1911 DS Prodigy. This is a Ronin Tactics belt in multicam black. From the front I have the T-Rex Arms 2011 mag carrier, a dual pistol mag carrier by Haley Strategic Partners, a mag carrier for my carbine by T-Rex Arms. Over here is the GBRS Group IFAS. Then the Black Point holster made for the Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy. This is the Condition Gray. It's probably the first gen. It's actually a sling retainer made for the carbine, but I went ahead and I modified it to carry a cat tourniquet. This is a training tourniquet from North American Rescue. It's a Gen 7 cat tourniquet. This is what I use on a job and what I have in my personal kits, whether it's on person, on body, off body, in an IFAC, in my vehicle. You always find me carrying a cat tourniquet. It's already staged and ready to go. I've used it multiple times in training and I will continue to use this. How would I stage this on my Condition Gray sling retainer? I put it on and that's it. Deployment. Get this as high as I can. Pull the slack out. Twist the rod. Should be good after two to three turns. I'm already feeling the tension, it's tight. Loop this through, put on the time tab, mark it. And that's how you would do a one-handed tourniquet application. I'm going to put it back the way that it was before so I can practice more repetitions with this training tourniquet. So, pulled everything out, rods loose, inspecting my tourniquet, just a good habit to have. I'm going to loop the red tip through. And what I like to do is I like to fold it in itself so that I have something big to grab onto to pull through. Next up, I am going to bring this here, fold it in, fold it in again, and it should look like this. Tail's gonna go here. The time tab, I like to stage it with a little bit of a ledge here so I can just easily pull it. And that right there is how I stage my cat tourniquet for rapid deployment. This is all staged and ready to go. I'm going to put it back on my holster so that I can practice more repetitions with my training tourniquet. So this comes undone, tourniquet gets placed, and we're ready to go for the next repetition. Well guys, thanks for joining me on my garage session today on an overview of my belt setup and what I carry in my personal first aid kit. Stay safe out there, keep training, and I'll catch you next time. I think fear and not knowing what to do or how to use medical equipment is a huge factor into why a person wouldn't jump into action to save someone's life. If a person were to come into an accident and saw a wounded person for the first time of their lives, like that could be pretty traumatic. So that's why I always encourage people to seek training. You know, if there's a medical course locally, a Stop the Bleed class or a CPR class, TCCC or TECC, take it. Because that could potentially save someone's life one day. The first thing you need to do is leap into action, and second, follow through with your plan of care. So knowing your medical equipment, knowing its indications and uses, that is what's going to save the life of the person you're entering aid to.